preparing to live stream the meeting. Okay, dalit lang gaya. At tay job, kaliyo ko nagsabat na. Sit up, sit up. Okay. Okay, uh, good evening everyone. Let us let's start. You know, we can we will listen one song and after that uh, we can pray and uh, we will give time to Mom uh, Dona Lo Aragon for her lecture this evening. So let me play one song for us to listen this evening. Uh, let us listen to a song which entitled God leads us along.
All right, to start with, shall we bow our heads for prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we would like to praise the Lord for allowing us to meet online with young people around the world who are now ready to listen to the counsel and uh, lecture of Mom Aragon. May that you will bless this meeting, Lord. Bless our connection, internet connection, and our uh, power this evening. Also bless... Uh, also, all the participants this evening, in Jesus' name, amen. So this evening, before we will give time to our speaker, Ma'am uh, Dona Lo Aragon, one of the experts when it comes to love, courtship, and marriage in the campus. She is our current uh, librarian and the wife of Pastor Jesse Aragon. We will give first the time to Brother Ronald Risulat, okay, Brother Pururu, uh, to give us special song this evening. This morning, with tears in my eyes, how can I live with this feeling inside? On my knees, you help me to see that your love is riches even me. Lord, why do you love me still? When I go against your will, I struggled in every day. But Lord, please show me the way. Help me to be more like you. Everything that I do. Help me to love you more each day. Come into my heart to stay. And look at this world, what a message is here. But I hope do I have everywhere there is sea. On my knees, you help me to see that your love is richest even me. Lord, why do you love me still when I go against your will? I struggle every day. But Lord, please show me the way. Help me to be more like you. Everything that I do. Help me 
to love you more each day. Come into my heart to stay. Lord, why do you love me still when I go against your will? I struggle in every day. But Lord, please show me the way. Help me to be more like you. Everything that I do. Help me to love you more each day. Come into my heart to stay. Come into my heart to stay. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Pororo. Uh, thank you so much through Tiny, uh, George and Rady. You know, he invited Brother Pororo, Brother Ronald Risolat in our meeting this evening. We would like to uh, welcome everyone in our meeting this evening. We have uh, Mom uh, Allen Amarilia with us and the rest of our young people all throughout uh, the Philippines. And uh, we have 16 participants and still uh, others are coming. And uh, we'd like to inform you also that we are also live on YouTube this evening to be shared in Facebook. So now I will give the time to our lecturer this evening, uh, Ma'am Donalo Aragon. Ma'am, I will unmute you now. Okay. Mayong gabi sa tanan. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pastor. Bati on lang ko. Okay. Thank you so much for this opportunity to be able to uh, give a lecture on one of the very important areas in a person's life. And that is how to choose you know, a lifetime partner. Uh, okay. Now, what? Paano ni pa? Paano ni? Dari lang kita. Paano ni mo proceed sa next? Just press the screen, ma'am, and then okay. uh, and then uh, it will. Okay. okay. So this this evening we will be talking about biblical guidelines on how to choose our life your lifetime partner because i have already chosen mine now one of the most important decisions one has to make in his lifetime is the choice of a marital partner in fact uh, there are actually there are three major choices that we are going to make in our lifetime the first one is actually the choice of to whom will i dedicate my life and that is the choice of having Jesus as our master and Lord, to whom will we dedicate our lives. The second choice is the choice of what are we going to do with our time and service? That is our mission. What is our purpose here in life? And the third most important choice is the choice of a mate or whom will I spend my lifetime with? Now, Although it may be, it may seem easy, you know, if, especially if you're in love. It may seem easy, but actually it's quite hard to be able to make a choice that you will not regret. In fact, Ellen White said, since marriage affects the life here and in the life to come, it is very important that one has to make a decision or make a choice of a life partner that he or she will not regret. The late John Gokongwei, 
he is the owner of Cebu Pacific, Robinsons, and ano pa da, no? Nga mga establishments, successful businessman. He said that deciding on the one you marry is the most important decision you ever make. For us, yeah, Christians, it's only one of the most important. Next to the salvation of our soul is the most important decision that you make in this life is the choice of your life partner. Now, this evening, let us and let us try to discover or perhaps review what are some of the guidelines that we need to consider as we contemplate on choosing the partner that you want to spend the rest of your life with. Actually, I have only identified six important guidelines. There may be others, but I would just like to focus on these six. Now, the first one here actually is on character. Some people may have a basis of choosing a life partner based on beauty. Some may be based on talent. Some may be based on riches or fame or success or intelligence. There are, there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, I always believe that the first thing that I need to consider, that we need to consider, young people, especially you, is the character. Because the character defines a person and influences his or her decisions in life. Now, there are a lot of good qualifications or good traits that a good spouse should have. But I would just like to limit my presentation to three. For me, the three most important traits. The first one is being cheerful. Why? A person or a spouse who has a sense of humor makes life easier. According to Ellen White, a true Christian is a cheerful Christian. One who does not allow himself to be intimidated by life's difficulties or life's hardships or struggles that despite or in the midst of these difficulties, he or she remains cheerful. Now, when you have a spouse who is cheerful, dogamag ana ang tanan, no? Especially when you have, you know, in, in a marriage relationship, there can, um, what you call these difficulties or trials or problems will not be avoided. But as long as you approach them with a sense of cheerfulness, knowing that, you are God is in control, then I think everything will be okay. Proverbs 15:30 says, a cheerful look brings joy to the heart of another. So a person who is fun to be with brings joy to the person who whom he is or he she is with. And I believe that um, a happy marriage is composed of two cheerful individuals. A sense of humor is an attractive trait. There is abundant cross-cultural evidence that shows that being funny makes you more desirable as a mate, especially if you're a man. Actually, when my husband, when my sweetheart, now my husband, has been courting me, I asked myself, makakadlaw mo kodaihan sa iya? So he seemed to be a man who is quite serious and a man of few words. But then I discovered later on that he also is a man with a good sense of humor. Second, a trait that I would like to emphasize is a future spouse should be a good communicator. As I've mentioned earlier, in marriage, there will always be problems. There will always be misunderstandings. There will always be difficulties. But if the two individuals who are married are good communicators, then they can iron out the problem. They can find solutions, and they can be able to avoid the conflicts because they know how to communicate well to each other. According to Proverbs 16, 24, kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. Now, Proverbs 31 also mentions about a woman who is known as a good communicator. This is our Proverbs 31 woman. It says there, she speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. 
I could not see. Baik lagi. Faithful instruction is on her tongue. Now, a woman who knows how to be tactful and who knows how to be gentle in the manner she speaks, how, how to be uh, soft-spoken, is a woman who can be admired. You remember the story of Abigail. She is a woman who is known to be a woman with tact no, and a good communicator. Great communicators give themselves permission to listen to others. In this, they understand what people are thinking. Good communicators are good listeners. In a marriage relationship, it is important that each partner takes time to listen to the other. Kung both of you communicate at the same time, talk at the same time, then I believe that no, nothing will be able to be solved misunderstanding will continue and the more that there will be conflict between the two of you and the third trait that i would like to share is the trait of being compassionate i think being loving being compassionate encompasses it all and first Corinthians 13 4 to 5 summarizes what a spouse should be like now marriage supposed to happen because of love between two individuals and god is the author of love and he is also the author of marriage therefore love should be patient it should be kind it should not envy it should not boast it is not proud it does not dishonor others it is not self-seeking it is not easily angered and it keeps no record of wrongs so if there is love in a person love for the other person whom he or she is married to then i believe that anything will be solved and anything no amount of storm or difficulty can break the relationship between these two who are much in love according to ellen white she, she said weigh every sentiment and watch every development of character in the one with whom you think to link your life destiny because the step you're about to take is one of the most important in your life and should not be taken hastily while you may love do not love blindly do not only focus on the beauty do not be blinded by fame do not be blinded by the intelligence or the talent of the person most importantly look at the character and take note that Helen White said, while you may love, do not love blindly. The second guideline that I would like to emphasize is home background. Now, I do not say that you have to look at the person's background as far as riches or probably um, their status in life, the kind of home they have. But what I would like to emphasize here is the relationship of the family members in the home where he or she has been brought up. Because it is always truth that our personal values are first learned at home. We, we, are, we have been born into a family relationship wherein our values have been formed and have been shaped. And it's because of that, that our decisions in life, our, uh, the way we, we deal with others can be traced back to the values we learned at home. Sorry. Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. It is very important that we understand that the way our future spouse has been brought up will affect the way he will become in the future home that you will be sharing with. To a large extent, extent, according to Ellen White, parents create the atmosphere of the home circle. And when there is disagreement between father and mother, the children partake of the same spirit. 
So if this person comes from a home where there is no unity between the father and the mother, there is always uh, chaos in the midst of their home, then I believe that this child, this, this person's uh, spirit, this person's continence or personality has also been greatly influenced by the example that he or she has seen in his or her parents. Our values define our character. So if the person you're going to marry comes from a home where good values have been strongly emphasized, spiritual values, moral values, relationship values, then I believe that this person whom you want to be married to also carries with him the same values he learned at home. And it also influences his or her character. The third guideline that I would like to share is the opinion of others. Walk in wisdom to stay safe. Do not just simply say, this is my life. I can do with whatever I want. I could, I could go wherever I want to. But it is important, young people, that you always consider the wisdom of those people around you, especially your parents and your trusted friends. You know, when you are in love, sometimes you cannot think straight. You know, when you are in love, Siling Panila, I am crazy in love. Sometimes you cannot think properly. Your, your decisions, your choices are influenced by the person whom you think you are in love with. But it is very important that as you consider, you know, if you want to marry this person, that you have to consider the opinion of others. It is very important that we need to, to remember always that we need to obey our parents. Whatever their counsels, whatever their, their uh, opinions, it has to be respected. If you remember the story about the elephant and the seven blind men, each of them have different opinion of what an elephant looks like. And each of them only focuses on one aspect or one part of the elephant. But in the real sense, an elephant, they are only looking at one aspect. It means that if you are looking at it, in that particular, in that uh, same example, our limited knowledge led us to believe it to be the whole truth. So if we don't listen to others, if we don't listen to our trusted friends or to our family members of what he or she, our future spouse is, then it may cloud our decision makings. It may affect our choices and if we continue to pursue our decision, then we might regret it later on. It says here that more eyes means clearer vision. No? When there is no wisdom, according to Proverbs eleven fourteen, when there is no wisdom, the people fall. But in the multitude of wise men, there is safety. So if you want to be successful in the choice of your life partner listen to the wisdom of your parents of your pastor of your elderlies and of your trusted friends because it is only through their eyes that you will be awakened to the real situation and real nature of the person whom you would like to spend your the rest of your life with dream and pray and seek counsel about the characteristics you should be looking for in a potential spouse. And then resolve not to settle for less. Don't let your choices be driven by appearances. So do not settle for less. So take the time to always know if what you are going to do, what you're about to do, is the best for you or not. The fourth is industry or diligence. Sense of industry or diligence is important in one's success in life. Meaning to say, a person 
who want you if you want to spend the la- your the rest of your life with should have an a, a sense of industry or diligence because it is the th- earnest and thorough application of one's energy to accomplish his or her goals pay careful attention to details and is dedicated to achieving quality results we don't want that to be with a person na pawala lang no remember in marriage there are certain responsibilities played by by two spouses so if the person you have been married to is not diligent enough gamay lang ang kabod lang sa kabuhi must stop na dayon no hindi na magpursigido meaning to say especially if you know if you're a woman and you're going to marry you know the choice of a husband it should be somebody who is hard working enough to be able to provide you and your future children with the best uh possibilities for them to be able to acquire the best life no in this in the in their lifetime especially your future children now proverbs 22 also tells us seest thou a man diligent in his business he shall stand before kings he shall not stand before mean men so meaning to say if a person is diligent hard working industrious uh persevering then he eventually will not settle for will not only be occupying lower responsibilities but he will be lifted up he will be promoted he will be given higher responsibilities because he is seen as a man who can be trusted because of his diligence according to Ellen White in Adventist Home page 47 young ladies take note let a young woman accept as a life companion only one who possesses pure manly traits of character one who is diligent aspiring and honest one who loves and fears God so diligent diligence is very important in one success for the for the women Proverbs 31 also tells us that a woman must be diligent you know in the way she manages her household future household men you have to take note that um, the future wife should know how to manage the household diligent enough to provide you with your needs as a husband and the children and be able to manage your finances well and also kung siling pa dila madiskarte sa kabuhi no kung ay natrabaho ang bana he or she can still be able to support her husband that is diligence look for someone who is disciplined and diligent who has goals and works hard to achieve them both of you are going into a relationship that is very serious a marriage relationship is not a bed of roses it is not a road or it is not a journey that is always smooth sailing but there will be bumps along the way but if both of you possess the same diligence perseverance and sense of industry always focus on the goals then both of you will become successful in the marriage that you are in second the the fifth is church affiliation again i would like to emphasize that when we come when it comes to marriage relationship there should be unity as far as faith is concerned you have to ask yourself if this person fears the lord is this person a believer or does he or she truly loves jesus because you cannot afford to compromise your faith and you should never compromise your faith bisan ano pa na da kagwapa ano pa da kagwapo kamangaranon ka talented ka alam never compromise your faith according to second corinthians 6:14 it says do not be bound together with unbelievers for what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness or what fellowship has light with darkness it would always be a problem between the two of you when you do not share the same faith or the same beliefs can two walk together without agreeing on the same direction 
Amos 3.3. It is only when you are united in your spiritual beliefs, in your in your values, spiritual values, that you can be able to walk together and be successful in your marriage. A relationship where you can pray, worship, and passionately pursue together is always worth the wait. Always worth the wait. And most importantly, in your marriage relationship, Christ must be the foundation with both of you looking to him trusting in him and loving together in the days to come. So you can never achieve this kind of happiness despite, you know, the, the riches or the fame or the intelligence or the beauty. If Christ is not in that relationship, then it can never be a truly happy relationship. And the sixth and the last are expectations. Sharing some expectations is important to avoid conflicts or easily resolve them. Now, sometimes a um, couple got married. Then at, after they are married, after the honeymoon phase is over, that reality comes in. Masiling expectations versus reality. Mayo lang kung ang reality mag-exceed sa expectations. The problem will be if the reality is you know, lesser than the expectations. Nag-expect ka sang amunin ka dako, but then after honeymoon, amo gali na. No? Hindi gali amo to. So there will be conflict. There will be problems. So you have to understand and you have to talk it over. What are expectations that you share? And what are the nine common marriage expectations? The first one is money. No? Isa gina sa mga dapat istoryahan. What is money? And how do you manage your money? Are you a spender or are you a saver? No? May joint bank accounts bala ka mo or kada isa sa inyo lain-lain ng bank accounts. And who will manage your money? Is it the wife or the husband? Kag ano ang inyong mga priorities when it comes to spending? And ano ang inyong, uh, uh, kung, for example, kung may kwarta ko, may kwarta man siya, sino ang dapat, uh, will there be still uh, decisions as to be made kung or I can just buy it easily on my own without consulting the other. What are our saving goals? May ara bala kami opportunity, may ara bala priority, hindi priority bala ang pag save or bahala na anyway, may swell duman pa the next na month. The second area, expectation is on romance and affection. No? Um, is PDA or public display of affection okay? No? Isagi ni sa my expectation kung sa una sangit kasal ako because i was expecting you know nga ang bana ko holding hands man kami ihagbayan niya man ko pero wala no kay nga he has come from a home nga hindi iya nga nakita nga amo na gali dapat no hindi amo na ka ka showy sang iyang father whereas ako ya i come from a home where my father was showy sa ako nga nanay so I expected nga amo man ang akong kabana. Pagali, pag-abot sang amon after sang amon na wedding, a wedding, after sang honeymoon, hindi abo, no? But then we ironed it out, I took it over with him, and it was resolved. Third, uh, expectations. Area of expectations that you need to talk about is about in-laws or expect extended family. How much time will you spend with them weekly? No? Permible ka wabisita? Ano ka often? How involved will they be in your relationship? Uh, kung mag-away ka mo, dugay-dugay, dito ka na lang pauli naman. Or, you, or the parents will just be there to guide you, but not to be heavily involved. How about financial support? No? Sa isa ka isa. Uh, will, will, for example, ang isa ya ka couple, ang isa ya ka, ang spouse ya nga isa, ang iyang parents ya able. Ang isaya pigado gid. So, you have to talk it over because there might be some misunderstanding later on. Nga idiriya, pero may kamuti kabulig, ang isaya wala. Or, the other spouse who has plenty may not understand the need of the other one nga gusto siya magbulig sa iya nga parents or sa iya family. Fourth, how about kids? Do you want to have kids later on? No? 
may ara iban nga nagpakasal lang pwede sila gusto sang kabataan. So you have to take it over kung okay lang nga may bata ka mo. Kaya base ang isa sa inyo, hindi siya gusto nga may bata. There are some ladies who don't want to be pregnant. Kaya hindi sila gusto nga ang ilay nga figure maguba. No? So if you have kids, then what are the activities? Kung pila, kabilog ang dapat nyo bataon. No? Sino ang mag-take care? Ano nga kind of education you're going to give them? And what, how are you going to discipline them? So you have to understand that there are different types of styles. And the discipline styles also will be influenced by the background where you come from. So how you were brought up, how you were disciplined by your parents will largely affect the way you discipline your future children. So both of you should make the point that you understand and that you make uh, an, um, an agreement that this is how it should be done. Five, chores. Sin, oh, ang maghimo si ni, sino maghimo si na, no? Or ako na lang bala permi. Uh, okay lang ba nga mag kita someone to be our helper inside the home? No? May arap na division of labor. So these are important things that you need to remember. Because in a stereotype environment, usually, gina picture out nga at the end of the day, ang bana, pag abot sa balay, mapungko sa sofa, maghulat, maghulat sa panyapon, magbasa newspaper, tanaw TV, while the wife, who has also come home from, from work, will still be the one to cook. No? So, ano bala ang dapat may division of labor? Because if this is not ironed out, then there will be conflicts. Sixth, is organized this versus disorganized especially if one spouse or one future spouse is organized and the other one is messy no so the kogini nga kaaway yun gamay lang abutang but this will be a source of big problem later on ko ang isa ya lapta lang ang lapta ang isa ya very neat and organized so you have to you have to talk it over no and plan how to maintain organization inside the home. Next is communication. No, may ara iban, especially mga babae, nga gapangakig na, pero hipos lang yapon. If you ask them, gapangakig ka, mahambala wala, pero gapangakig na. So how do you communicate? What are your communication styles? Then they, they have to be, talk it out. Talk it over. Amoko niya, dapat open ka, open man ko. There's in, in a marriage relationship, there should be open communication. Because if the communication line is open, conflicts will be easily resolved. And eight, most of the most important is spiritual. What is a spiritual leader? Who will be the spiritual leader? Siyempre, in our Adventist home, it is always understood that the husband or the father is the spiritual leader of the home. He is the priest. No, But in the absence of the father, the husband or the wife has to take over the mother. Now, that has to be emphasized, no? Also, at nine, work or career, no? May ara iban nga mga bana, right after marriage, after wedding, rather, hindi na pwede nga magtrabaho ang asawa, no? Is this okay with the wife? Nga hindi na siya magtrabaho. How about her career? How about advancement niya, no? So, it has to be uh, ironed out. It has to be discussed thoroughly if there are if they have to come up with a specific under agreement or understanding, especially if the woman also is a successful, is successful in her area of work, na? and of course, basi iya kung pagkatapos ang wedding, maglaiban iya buot ng hindi na siya katrabaw. But if she hope she hopes to take care of the children, kung hindi na siya magtrabaho, then it depends. So it is something that they have to decide upon. It is also important to identify where expectations come from. Our family of origin is primarily responsible. We assume everyone does it that way because that's how it was done in our family. As I've said earlier, expectations ko sa akong bana this is what is being done in our home by my father. Culture also exerts a strong influence on our expectations. Kung diin kang uh, culture naghalin, diin kang region sa Pilipinas naghalin, also affects your expectations. No? 
Ephesians 4, 2, 3 says, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit to the bond of peace. So even though expectations, not at all times, may be similar or be uh, congruent between husband and wife or between spouses, but if there is unity no, in the focus of you know, in the goals that they have for each other and for the marriage relationship, then I believe that it will be ironed out and it will be um, there will be more there will be uh, plans to be carried out or strategies that they will be that they will that will be identified so that they will come up with united set of expectations according to ellen white in adventist home page 105 those who marry enter a school from which they are never in this life to be graduated. So once you are already in a marriage relationship, it is very hard to go out. And it, according to one author I have read, Dan Chan said, it is better to be a lonely single person than to be a lonely married individual. Mas may pang lonely ka nga single sang sa lonely ka Nga merit. In a marriage relationship where there is no happiness, it will truly affect your total, total life. No? And, in, and since it is something that is permanent, it is something that you can never graduate from, it is very important that you remember six important guidelines that will guide you in your choice of a marital partner. So looking at the word choice, I have used the word choice as our acronym. There are six of these uh, considerations that you need to look into. So the first one is character. The second is the home background. Character, take note of the character because this is something that is very serious. No, you don't want to spend the rest of your life with a person na you will be unhappy. No, You will be unhappy and you will be dissatisfied. Home background. Remember that the home background provides the set of values that this and this, per, and this set of values influences the character of the individual. Third, opinion of others. Listen to the wisdom of the old. Listen to the wisdom of your parents. Listen to the counsels of your trusted friends. And number four, industry or diligence. Only marry a person who has diligence, persevering spirit that no matter difficulties that may arise in the course of your marriage journey, he or she is still able to move on to continue because he has the spirit of diligence. Letter C, the fifth is church affiliation. Be always with one who shares the same beliefs with you. And letter E, expectations. Take note that you need to have at least similar expectations or iron it out before you decide to be married to each other. Choose your life partner with much discretion. As you rest in God's plan, in his timing, pray for a spouse who is trustworthy, helpful, hardworking, compassionate, wise, and one who trusts Jesus. A sincere Christian, according to Ellen White in Adventist Home, Chapter 6, a sincere Christian will not advance his plans in this direction without the knowledge that God approves his course. He will not want to choose for himself, but will feel that God must choose for him. So pray. In fact, in Adventist home, it is stated there that when you're about to be married, you have to double, triple your prayers. No nga, hindi ka magsala. Paulit-ulit, paulit-ulit, Lord, guide us. Are we 
going in the right direction. And most importantly also, you have to ask questions to yourself. Adventist homepage 44, it says there, let the questions be raised. Will this union help me heavenward? If magpakasal bala ako sa sininga-tawo, will help me nga magpakapalangit ako? Will it increase my love for God? And will it enlarge my sphere of usefulness in this life? No? Mangin maayo pagit bala ako nga tawo. Will I grow more as an individual in the in my in my in my own talents that has given me will i grow no will i still be able to use my talents for the lord and for the service of others if these reflections present no drawback then in the fear of god move forward so again will this union help me heavenward will it increase my love for god and will it enlarge my sphere of usefulness in this life Will I grow as a person if I marry this future spouse? 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, Whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. So even in the choice of your life partner, always remember that you are doing it not for your own satisfaction, not for your own rewards, but you are doing it all for the glory of God. Because God has established the home to be a mission, to be an opportunity for you to become a witness to others. So in choosing your life partner, you have to do it and think that you are doing it because you want to honor God and you want to glorify him. And if you do that, I believe that he will surely bless you in the choice of your marital partner of a life partner. May the Lord continue to bless you and may you continue to prayerfully and diligently consider, you know, as these important aspects as you contemplate on looking at the person you are with or whom you're going to be with as your future life partner. May the Lord bless us and may the Lord continue to abide in us in this hard time. Hmm? Okay. Thank you, ma'am, for sharing your expertise this evening. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming, for listening to a very good lecture. Now, I would like to open and mute all of you. Please uh, manage your... Manage your... And, uh, mute your microphone and if you have a question this evening to our expert you can ask question brother Ariel you can uh, unmute your microphone if you have question you can raise your hand if you have question mom mom Len Gabotero mama Marilia do you have a question? <laughs> Mom, Mama Marilia can help us answer, of course. Ariel, Yale, you have a question, Yale? Okay, unmute, just unmute, Yale, if you have a question. Wala na question, wala na question, Yale? Wala na question. Okay, okay, okay. Very good. Uh, Brave, do you have a question? Brave Aragon, uh, by the way, there are more than uh, 16 people uh, also watching live, no? So, Brave, do you have a question? Okay, man, sir. Okay, lang. Yes, Klaro uh, lang So, Klaro, sir. very good, very good. And, uh, we would like to welcome also uh, Abed Amor, who is here, Pearl Nipomusino, and uh, Mama Itel, and others who are here. Uh, others were not able to come in because uh, we intend to limit the participants so that uh, our, you know, uh, streaming will not be interrupted while others are just listening online and it will be also uploaded 
and uh, others could continue listen to this lecture even it's offline. So, Ma'am Don, thank you so much for your. You can unmute, Ma'am. Uh... Thank you. Also, Ma'am Allen. <laughs> Ma'am Allen, thank you for joining us this evening. And uh, to close, okay, can we ask uh, Ma'am Allen to offer us in prayer? <laughs> okay, na, sir. Okay Let's na, pray. Okay Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you, O Lord, for the protection throughout the day. Thank you for the um, this meeting that we have had uh, we are so blessed because of the message of mam aragon uh, thank you O oh lord for reminding us of our marriage relationship as um, married people and th and thank you also O oh lord for this message that is very uh, timely for our young people O oh lord may you continue to bless those who have listened and who are listening and those who will be listening, especially our young people, that they will be guided in choosing their life partner. And may this uh, lecture would be their guide in choosing the right person for uh, a life partner. Thank you also for Pastor Carado as uh, he leads this <clears throat> program. Uh, may you continue to bless him and bless all the young people, bless all those people who are um, listening and um, being there to support this program thank you father for this blessing thank you for mom aragon and thank you for for the message for the lecture that we have uh, heard this evening please forgive us our sins in jesus name amen thank you amen amen thank you so much thank you and uh, may god bless all of you, I would like to...